Hi, I'm Evil Tactician from Manapool.co.uk and this is the third part in our Star Ruler video tutorials. In this video we're going to look at the ship design in the blueprint section, which is one of the most complex areas of the game and also one of the most interesting. So, this is the blueprint section and this has opened on the layout view. Uh, the first thing to understand is that um, this blue bubble here represents uh, the starship that you're designing. And this bit on the side that says front is the front of the ship, which is uh, quite obvious. That means that uh, this is the back of the ship, this is the left side at the top here, and the bottom here is the right side. This is very important to bear in mind, because Star Ruler has directional damage, meaning if your ship gets shot from the front, that the subsystems and the system that you include in the, in the front part of the ship actually get damaged first. In the, that particular case. So that's something to really bear in mind. You'll see here that there is also a blueprint print list where you can all see all your current uh, blueprints. So these are the ones that came by default with, uh, with the game when, uh, when you start a new game. You can see for example if you would open uh, say a scout that you see um, th this is basically a blueprint of, of a scout. There's one big engine um, there's a fused fuel cell here and, and there's a couple of other things. Uh, this is all really confusing at first. So what we're going to do is make something from scratch. So I'm going to press the clear button and make something entirely from scratch. What you'll see here in the top left is the skill button. In Star Wars you can basically make ships of any size. And the bigger the skill the bigger the ship is basically. And each, each of the components that you put in the ship um, has a power or abilities multiplied by, by the skill. So if you would uh, uh, make something of, of skill 8 rather than skill 1, it's basically uh, 8 times bigger than, than skill 1. It's it's something to, to really bear in mind. You can do some pretty cool stuff with this. Uh, this also reflects in the game itself. So if you make something absolutely huge, it will be huge in the game compared to a smaller ship. So we're gonna just work on on skill one right now because you can scale that up and down later without uh, without damaging your uh, your blueprint. So the first thing we're gonna do is make an unmanned scout ship. Uh, the aim of this is to make a very fast ship that um, can stay in the air for a reasonable amount of time without running out of fuel. So first we add a standard hull. You'll notice that we don't have many options here because we've just started the game. We haven't researched any technology, but that's on purpose to keep things easy for this uh, for this tutorial. So, since we decided that we're going to make a very fast ship, yeah, we're going to look for our fastest engine, which is a thruster in this case. So we add a thruster, and we're going to add another thruster, and we're going to scale these up. So you see, we're going to make these bigger, thereby giving them more effect. You already see that the acceleration to of this, this ship has increased significantly. And what you'll also see now is the right side here starts containing statistics on the ship. So you can see exactly what the ship is going to be like, how many hit points it has, all these other things. And very important here at the top it will give you warning messages. So in this case we have insufficient control. That means there are no uh, people, there is no crew to actually uh, mend this ship and um, yeah control it so to speak so these engines each require 20 control at the moment so let's resolve that first we go to the control tab and we add a bridge a bridge adds control as you can see we have 156 control right now however a bridge needs crew and a crew comes from crew quarters so we also need to add some crew quarters there we go and you'll see now that that cascades down and that the crew then in turn needs life support because space is not very forgiving so there we go so now we have each of these things and we can actually scale these down later because we don't need this much control so as you can see we reduce that down which also means we don't need crew quarters that large and we don't need life support that large so we've scaled it all down. And you see that the space here is affected. You know, we have 15 space here in this uh, in this hole. We've used 8.75. Right, so the, the next thing that we need is power. It's pretty important, otherwise this thing is going nowhere. So we go to support and we're going to add a power generator. 
And as you can see, the power output is now positive. So I'm going to scale that down as well. And we're still positive. Now, last, what we also see is that this ship is using quite a lot of fuel. It has a fuel usage of 1.23 per second and a fuel storage of 80. As you can see here, that results in a flight time of only one minute and then the ship would be out of fuel and yeah, be, be stranded. That's, that's not very useful. So we're going to add fuel cell. And that, as you can see, significantly increases the, the, the flight time of this, uh, of this ship. So we're going to actually add two. There we go. Just to, to spread them out a bit. So that's resolved now. And now we actually have an unmanned scout. And we could save it like that. But we have a little bit of room spare. So we can uh, basically do with that uh, as we wish. We could add uh, uh, more power. Or we could add, uh, uh, for example, uh, a ram scoop to generate some fuel or, or anything else. But we're going to actually look at the subsystem modifiers. This is an important um, area to know. There's also the miscellaneous where you can add ammo and, and other stuff, but we're not, uh, we don't need that right now. So in subsystems, you can actually uh, create systems that you attach to other systems and that kind of boost them. It's, uh, it's, it's an ability that lets you really tweak your ship designs even further. So in this case, um, we might want to give some uh, emergency power to the life support, as an example, because if the life support fails, this ship would actually be in, in quite a lot of trouble. So we would do that like that. Make it as big or as small as you would like it to be. You know, that the, the statistics are affected. And then you attach it to the subsystem. As you can see they both highlight. It's a bit hard to see but trust me that's what's, uh, what's happening. You can also add uh, coolant systems and rack mounts for weapons and thereby uh, control them or add bulkheads to um, give uh, specific uh, components a bit more uh, hit points. So in this case we add a bulkhead for example to the power generator. We're actually not going to do that because bulkheads add a lot of mass and, and make the ship a lot smaller. And, and the idea was to have a small unarmed um, ship that goes as fast as possible. So yeah, th that's pretty much all there is to, uh, to, to shipbuilding. Um, obviously when you add weapons, the weapons might require power or ammo. Um, you have to bear these things in mind when you design a ship, and you can you can really make some uh, some powerful uh, ships. Uh, I'll also show you if you scale this up that all the statistics change. But that's a very large scout scout ship, ship so I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't recommend that. It doesn't actually add anything to uh, to your scouting ability. So yeah, that that's it. That's the the, the ship design uh, screen. I hope you enjoyed the video tutorials and you should be ready to, uh, to give the game a go. Go now!